Hello everyone, it is Jacob here and I would like to give you an update to my previous build or the part 3, this will be part 4. I've made a few changes uh, which make the character more well rounded and easier to play with higher quality of life. Now, well, I'd like to share them. Uh, did not change much about the gearing, I've just like upgraded a few pieces with the right corrupts. I'm still missing a corruption on my helmet, which will give me a lot of damage there. I'm, I'm missing a lot of my damage there and I still need a better ring, which would give me plus two more max channel stacks, so plus three on the ring. That's what I'm looking for, but yeah, the, the farming the ring is hard. You have to farm chests. So <clears throat> yeah, so that's for the gear. Uh, blind vision with corrupted projectile speed, preferably. And then you are filling up the stats that you are missing, so erosion resistance for me, just to be able to cap it. Then you would want uh, more energy shield to scale more from your cicada shell or projectile speed skill area also helps, so whatever you can get on that. And try to get the corruption on the projectile speed bonus. Then the amulet, you can use this. Uh, to guarantee you uh, critical strikes because one of your hero traits uh, makes your critical strikes chance unlucky so you are crit critting less but with this amulet you are guaranteed to crit so that's to like negate one of our negative sides of hero tra uh, negate one side of our hero traits um, but if you would be willing to focus on critical strike chance on your gear or even slot in the fire golem or fire spirit for more critical strike chance, you can use the amulet that uh, gives you um, energy shield based on your life. This one, so 30% of max life to energy shield. And as we can check here, uh, the armor is using the critical strike chance flame spirit and a few other rolls for critical strike chance just to be able to create more area reliably but yeah uh, this amulet is cheap most people are using it I see no reason not to but yeah there are other options uh, then the belt you want to get the corruption on the first mod just to get more energy shield which at the same time would make you more squishy because you would have less life so yeah I like to keep it like this because I feel the damage is already high enough to clear everything but if you are looking for higher damage numbers then corruption on the first mod there's I believe up to 40% convert uh, the difference between the belt and the amulet is that the belt is converting your life into energy shield so it it is reducing your life pool and increasing your energy shield while the amulet actually gives you energy shield based on your life adds 30 percent 37% of max life to energy shield so it it is keeping your life as it is and it is giving you extra energy shield based on your life so this is on paper a better choice but it might cost you more on other pieces because you need to focus on critical strike chance then then as well so yeah for the ring max channel stacks that's what you are looking for here on the cicada shell try to get one with a corrupted second mod uh, to get the up to 13 percent of max energy shield to uh, elemental damage for your attacks and spells if you can get double corrupted, great. As you can see, still a room for improvement. I'm using two piece uh, set here to get the plus two projectile quant. And then some generic boots. Try to get one with as much movement speed and as much energy shield and resistances that you are missing. That would be that for weapons. You're using uh, double twisted branch because in their implicit they give you projectile quantity and the character scales from projectile quant 
and then try to get them with the first mod corrupted where you can get up to 60% uh, skill area is also applied to projectile speed and then you are converting the projectile speed through the helmet to additional damage so yeah that's why we want those mods corrupted and I'm trying to get uh, intelligence on both of them and then preferably projectile quantity but uh, for projectile quantity for you to be able to roll projectile quantity on the ones the ones needs to be a level item level 100 so yeah you need to farm for them they are really costly on uh, marketplace so i will be ju i will just continue farming and hope that i will drop one eventually to be able to craft myself and corrupt it you know there's yeah, those will be really hard to get or you will have you will have to buy the perfect ones for you. So intelligence and projectile quantity would be the preferable options for me. Critical strike damage, projectile speed, uh, skill area. Yeah, those would be the preferred uh, roles. For the stats, uh, I'm using elemental resistance aura, the precise one to increase my maximum elemental resistances and try to cap your resistances throughout your gear. So erosion resistance, I have it on my helmet. And then I'm focusing on intelligence and uh, energy shield on most of the pieces. Just to increase the damage even more. Um, resistance is here, resistance is on boots. Uh, as again energy shield and resistances intelligence lightning damage yeah so that's that uh, for the passive points unlike other people I'm using elementalist but let's start with the first one I'm going with goddess of hunting and I'm going with it because there's no other way to get to marksman if I want to use elementalist because if you would be using ranger as your last one you can go with god of war it's completely okay god of war is great as well you can check it here you would get uh, cheat that basically here and then you would get armor ignore on critical strike since we are 100% crit ignoring armor would increase our damage a lot because armor also uh, uh, gives you elemental damage reductions so for monsters that works as well so you would ignore their elemental damage reduction from armor which then increases your damage so this this uh, is really nice to have but i don't want to play what everyone else plays and i'm taking elementalist here elementalist is the is the, the tree that scales your channeled and elemental channeled and elemental damage so what i'm getting here is focus max channel stacks and five percent additional damage for every one additional max channel stack and i'm getting a lot of max chan max additional channel stacks i want that i want to have that on my candles i want to have that on the train i have a few from the passive tree yeah so i'm getting max channel stacks wherever i can and then i'm taking peculiar revive which is 25 percent additional damage when the enemy has elemental element you are always uh frostbiting or shocking enemies so this is always up so that's 25 percent additional damage from this and i don't know maybe 40 percent additional damage from max channel stacks depends on how many you manage to get I think it's free from the uh, ring and you can get two or four from candles that would be seven so yeah 35 percent maybe yeah and the tree scales your channel to damage and gives you resistance here and life sealed mana skill area and projectile speed some elemental penetration yeah and max channel stacks here at the last point i will put the skill builder in the video description so you can check it there 
but this is what I'm using. Goddess of Hunting, as I said, because I want to use Elementalist. If you don't want to use Goddess of Hunting, then there's God of War uh, with the Ranger instead of Elementalist. So that would look like this, and Marksman looks like this. It is the same as in the last video. Take in the para Parabolic Projectile Split Squad to increase your uh, ammo capacity and then scale in life and energy shield wherever you can. For the statue of God, that's the biggest change from the last time. Since I'm using Elementalist and the, the best node that you can get from Ranger is shooting arrows, which is 20% projectile damage and 50% knockback distance and the character scales from knockback distance as well. So you want to get this mod on your pedigree and pedigrees with shooting arrows are going around 1k while pedigrees with focus are going around 10k so I'm saving some money there. So yeah shooting arrows and then try to pair it with anything that uh, helps you uh, like even with damage or defense does not really matter just something useful so I took immune to frostbite that helps you a lot in if you are running uh, uh, maps with the gold watcher which bites you so you are immune to that and increases my gold and fire damage by 20% I'm doing all three elements of the damage so this helps me as well so shooting arrows and pair shooting arrows with anything useful. And then what you want to get on your slides. You want to get 150% increase and decrease on knockback distance is also applied to attack and spell damage. You definitely want to get that on one of your slides. And then you want to get uh, own one additional stack of focus blessing and chance to gain one stack of focus blessing upon inflicting damage on frostbite enemies on frostbitten enemies so you are generating focus blessings from this and then we want to pair this mod with another slate that gives you chance to gain tenacity and agility blessing when receiving focus blessings so through combination of these two mods you are generating all, all three types of, of blessings which then increases your damage and survivability as well because agility blessings give you uh, attack speed, cast speed and movement speed uh, and movement speed scales our damage as well so that's that and tenacity blessings give you damage reduction so it makes you more tanky and as you can see on all the slates I'm having max channeled stacks on them as well and then max focus blessing just to have a bit higher chance to deal double damage so I believe I have like six focus blessings in total and then on the mods you can actually get on the mod the divinity slates with uh, legendary slots you can get max channel stacks on there as well but graphing those is not cheap and I did not got into that yet so I'm trying to get max life, max energy shield, sealed mana, skill area and projectile speed. Uh, this mod is great. I have that on multiple of yeah, on all three of my divin of my goddess of knowledge divinity slates because it double dips with with our item uh, choices. So skill area increases your damage, projectile speed increases your damage, so you get damage from both of them. And then sealed mana just to be able to more comfortably uh, uh, use all three of my auras or, or even use more support links on my auras. And then on the red one, max life and max defense is nice to have because defense scales your energy shield and armor and evasion. And then again skill area, projectile speed and some sealed mana so you can see the trend here. For the skills. Uh, Ring of Blades, supported by critical strike damage, increased area and guard, and as many multiple projectiles as possible. Um, in instead of uh, increased area, you can use whatever else, like control spell is great. 
uh, should net you more damage uh, on paper but increased area also increases the scale of the rings so that's why I like it here because I have uh, better coverage and another option would be elemental fusion uh, if you are not using the, element, uh, the elementalist tree then this would give you damage as well but it prevents you from uh, or like you cannot frostbite enemies with this and frostbite slows enemies down which is another layer of defense like slowed enemies cannot get to you as fast so I don't really like elemental fusion here but it is an option and then another option would be freeze chance which would let you frost by enemies even faster once you stack 100 frostbites on enemies the enemies gets frozen for like two seconds maybe so yeah that's that would be another uh, layer of defense but yeah i decided to go with increased area just because it gives me better coverage um for the other active skills i'm using free skills to increase my damage and blue wrist steps also increase my uh, movement speed and, and through movement speed they increase my damage so blurry steps uh, automating it with preparation not needed you can press that manually mania and mass effect to increase its effect fixate uh, with preparation mania extended duration i'm just saving some money here but i would like to swap the preparation for uh, yeah, swap the preparation for activation medium preparation as well just to be able to cast that skill more often but for that you also need to decrease the cooldown of the skill because the base cooldown is 12 seconds so you preferably want to get like maybe 6 or 7 seconds activation medium preparation with, with uh, the tier 1 or tier 0 mod on the cooldown recovery speed just to be able to cast fixate more more often and all the uh, and the last skill would be elemental destruction uh, curse terran of malice abysmal hatred extended duration and link that with preparation this combination nets you almost 100% uptime if you link it with activation medium preparation you should have 100% uptime on the curse uh, no matter what and the last active skill here just to have some layer of defense just to have some layer of defense deep pain you can swap that for um, frost shield to increase your physical and fire damage reduction if you want to but my skill of choice here is delayed pain that prevents you from uh, big one shots basically so you are able to regenerate some life back while you are degenerating the big hit so yeah iron fortification uh, provides you some armor at least and uplifting increases the skill effect extended duration and linking that with uh, six second uh, activation medium preparation with some cooldown recovery and that nets you nets me with 100% uptime on delayed pain as we can check right here so it ends and it comes right back up if you get five seconds preparation it will not even disappear and it will be 100% up so that's for that uh, for the passive skills uh, defensive ones, energy fortress definitely, energy shield scales or damage, so energy fortress, fortress, and because I have so many uh, slates with sealed mana mods, I can use like multiple links or on most of my auras, so selfishness, stand as one. If you need to choose one of these two, a stand as one is the better choice, it gives you more percentage uh, of your in total because you get 18.3 for every aura affecting you times 3 up to times 3 so that's 30 uh, 54 percent at least 55 almost well selfishness only gives you 38 so 
Stentas one is the better uh, support here if you need to choose just one of those. So selfishness, Stentas one, Aura Amp, then uh, Elemental Resistance, Precise, just to increase my defense even more through uh, Elemental Resistances. As you could see I had 69 or 68 percent max Elemental Res, so that's through this Aura. For that to work you need the precise uh, version of this aura, which gives you plus 4% maximum elemental resistance, maximum resistance. And if you pair that with uh, element uh, with aura effect, uh, rolls on your gear and through these aura effect supports, you get like more than 4% obviously, so I'm getting 68 or 69, I'm not sure now. So yeah, Stentas 1, Selfishness, Aura Amp, and for the offensive auras, Precise Projectiles, linked with Stentas 1 to increase its effect. I would like to get the Precise version here, the Precise Precise Projectiles, which would, which would provide me with one additional projectile. Yeah, that's uh, room for improvement here. And then the last uh, aura would be Elemental Amplification, because I'm doing like... 96 or 95 percent elemental damage so this scales all my elemental damage again linking with it with Stentus 1 and then just to be able to reserve it I have to support this one with discipline this is the least important aura so yeah I'm reducing its effect here just to be able to reserve it and reserve the rest of the auras as well so that would be it. If you uh, want more survivability or you are okay with, with your one shots, like you are not getting one shot but you are getting low on, your, on life most of the times, feel free to swap elemental amplification with summon frost spirit which will, which will provide you with a maximum life and maximum energy shield regeneration over time. So that will help you regenerate your energy shield. If you are using the amulet that provides you with 100% crit, summon flame spirit won't help you with anything, it just gives you critical strike rating so that is completely useless, but if you are using the amulet that provides you with additional energy shield based on your life, then this spirit will help you cap your critical strike chance, so definitely swap one of your auras for this spirit if you are using the other amulet. For candles. I'm getting projectile quant and field mana just to be able to reserve my auras and the second one would be the stacking candle and I would like to get one with projectiles as well just to be able to increase my ammo capacity. Now that's for the character, now for the mechanics. Uh, Ring of Blades since it was introduced in the game is snapshot in. So what I will show you right now is how to use uh, the skill and how to increase your damage with it. If you only get into a map and start casting right away, you will deal damage but you will not reach your damage potential. So if if I just start the, start the robot here and I start casting, I will reach some damage, I don't know, maybe 100 mil, which is like nothing, right? And I cannot get more. I can get more if I swap to my Annihilator mode, like I can show it here. But now I need to stay in my Annihilator mode to be able to keep this damage up. But that, that's not what we want to do, right? Uh, we want to have this up with the movement speed. So what you can do, actually, when you, l when you load into a map, uh, I will let everything drop down. Uh, when you enter um, the map, you want to swap into your annihilator mode, start casting your uh, ring, and then swap into your movement mode. Now you have snapshotted your annihilator mode to the ring of blades, and you can just keep running fast in your movement mode, and you are still getting the bonus from your annihilator mode. So this is how snapshotting works on Ring of Blades. And now you can run throughout the map. When you need to like 
you shouldn't need to uh, <laughs> recast your ring of blades like ever. So you can just run the entire map like this. And yeah, that's uh, the that's the build mechanics. And the last thing that I need to mention is what I changed in my hero traits and hero relics. So uh, the hero relic uh, stayed the same, knockback distance, and uh, you start with max stacks of heat up when you load to the map. What this uh, allows you to do, you load into a map with maximum heat up stacks already. If you would like to push the damage of the build even higher, you can take uh, this hero trait and what that lets you do, you can load into a map. The ramp up of the build will be a bit longer, but, but, but what it lets you do, as you can see I have heat up stacks already maxed. What this mod does is it gives you 60 stacks of uh, additional damage for your projectiles and I already have those. So to get to maximum damage and be a little bit slower, this could be the better option for killing hard bosses. The only thing that you need to do is reload once and stay in your annihilator mode. So what I do now, I just click my D, I reload and now I just... I'm in my maximum damage, uh, like... This is the maximum damage potential of the build as of right now, once the ammo reaches overheat, which are the red numbers right now. Now this will be the maximum damage that the build can get once the overheat stacks to 100%. But what that means? is that you cannot swap back, because if you swap, swap back, you would lose all the orange stacks and you would need to stack back up again. So on long battles or long fights, this will be the better option for damage, but uh, it is clunkier to use, so I prefer the other option actually, even on bosses. Because it lets me stra uh, start the fight straight away, I don't need to pre-stack anything. So yeah, that's the option of the first raid here. I prefer the Shackles of Mania. So in maps you simply kill everything, every normal mob, non-elite. And it lets you switch your stances on the go. Which you are only you doing at the start when you load into a map as I've shown you before, so I switch, I start casting, I switch back, and I just keep this. And that's it. And I reach almost the same damage. And I reach it faster. So yeah, that's for the trade mechanics. And uh, here I'm using the ceasefire, which if you keep moving, uh, if I stop moving, my overheat will start going up, that's the red number here. If I start moving, I will start losing the overheat. So if you keep moving while doing the map, you should be able to run throughout the entire map and never have to reload. So that's the quality of life that the ceasefire provides you. Uh, if you want <laughs> crazy amounts of damage, you can use this bullet storm and this, and then you would have to use uh, the character just as I showed you in the last video, where you stack up your damage, then you have 10 seconds damage window, and then you have to reload and stack up again. It is clunky. I don't like that. This provides you with uh, steady uh, damage levels and you never need to reload, so you just run and gun and loot. And for the hero memories, I'm still using prototype. I already dropped two normal versions, but I sold them just to be able to buy all the 
hero slates and candles. So this I still using I'm still using prototype. And for the hero memories, you definitely want one with knockback and projectile quant. These are not cheap. So around 2k for the 50% ones. I guess 45 could be cheaper. Yeah. Affordable, but I want when I'm buying like the end game piece, I want the perfect one, so 50% around 2.5k and projectile one does not matter which one you get at least I did not notice I tried the projectile split and I had still the same like ammo capacity so that seems to not matter really so projectile quantity and knockback distance and the second one would be projectile quantity and what I like to use just to increase the survivability and uh, yeah survivability of the build uh, restore 8% of missing life and energy shield for every 3 meters of, of uh, movement made and since we are always moving because of our ceasefire mode to be, to be able to use the ceasefire this one is simply regenerating your life and energy shield all the time and that would be that for the character I will show you some 8.2 map I believe that's the furthest that I got so far but yeah definitely capable of clearing 8.3s as well as you will see in this it is really easy to just run through the map and kill everything. So again at the start of the map I'm sw switching to annihilator mode, starting to cast and then I'm switching back to movement mode and now I'm ready and I will just run through the entire map, kill everything. And that's that. If you are using the farming strat that I s showed you in the last video running one time mark 8 and then running time mark 7 maps you can easily uh, build up enough FEs to build this character I already have like 20k on the marketplace and I'm not even playing the game much I'm just trying to give you guys the information you need to be able to build your own characters so yeah, when you teleport you need to start your channel again, so swapping to annihilator mode, swapping back to the movement mode, and as you can see everything just dies instantly, even in 8.2 maps, with my 1 billion damage, and on bosses, I have my pack spirit set up the way that they swap automatically into my damage pack spirits. And in those I'm doing like free build. And that's it. That was enough to kill anything so far. So yeah. That's it for the build guys. Thank you guys for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.